What is up guys? I'm your real Soto and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a header on WordPress using the Caden theme header builder. Now this is a header that we're going to be building here. It's completely mobile optimized. Let me go ahead and show you guys that. So I'm going to go to inspect here and then I'm just going to start shrinking this down here. And as you can tell it's all mobile optimized here and it all looks really cool. And it's honestly by far one of the best um, themes that I've been using. So I highly recommend you guys use a catered theme for your header. Now that's entirely up to you. Um, but if you guys want to learn how to how to build this header on the cadence theme, just make sure to stick around. So let's begin. Now the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have cadence theme installed. So if you guys don't have it installed yet, just go ahead and download it on the cadence website. I'll have a link to that down in the description. So just download that, go to your dashboard, go to appearance and themes, click add new, and then just go ahead and upload the theme and install it. Now from here, let's go ahead and go into appearance and then go into customize. And then click on header. And now we're going to have our header builder. So I really like how Cadence created their uh, header builder. I think it's honestly really easy to use. So let's go ahead and just add our logo here. So click on your logo and then go ahead and just select your logo. I'm going to be using this one here. And then I'm going to click on skip cropping. Now we have our logo there, but we also have our logo and text. So just make sure on the logo layout, you only have logo. There we go. Now that's perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and just click back and I'm back in my header builder here. So from here, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have our primary navigation. So click on your primary navigation. And if you don't have the menu selected, just make sure you click on on menu and then just select your primary menu here. And also, if you have a different menu, the cool part about this, let me go back. Uh, let me go back to your header and then go to primary navigation and then go to select menu here So you're able to have a menu for your secondary header and also your mobile and your footer as well So it's honestly pretty cool that you're able to set that up so you can have different uh, menus for you know for your desktop and your mobile All right, so now that we've, that we've covered that here okay. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and add one of these widgets here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the search bar so I'm going to grab this search here and I'm going to drag it right, right after my primary navigation. And as you can tell, now we have this um, search icon and whenever someone clicks on this, let me actually publish this and I'm going to go ahead and add a different tab here so we can take a look at what we're building here. So now whenever I click on this, we have this cool search bar. All right, now that's set up here. Let's say we want to go ahead and add a button. So grab this button here and then just drag it all the way after search. And then right here, we have our button added. Now mine is a little bit um, custom. I did honestly add some styling to that, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to edit that. So just click on your button here. And then right here, you can change the, the label of your button. So we can change this to uh, maybe book a call. And then, and then over here, we can either have people open a new tab and we can add our URL. Um, we can have a set link to no follow, set link attribute sponsor, set link to, to download. Um, now that's just up to you whether you're doing a download link or not. And then for your field, you can have it in, uh, you can have it filled or on the outline. So uh, just kind of depends on how you guys want to go ahead and do that for your bun style, just filled or outline. And then the button visibility. Now you now this can be for um, logged out users or logged in users. It's actually pretty cool functionality to be honest. But I'm gonna set this to everyone. Um, and then we can go ahead and click on design here. And then we we have like our uh, sizing here. So this is uh, this is uh, probably really small, medium, large, um, and then custom. We can have a custom sizing to this. But I'm gonna just have it at medium. And then we can go ahead. Actually, you know what I think? Let's see here. Large actually looks a lot better. 
and then we can go ahead and set our colors here. Now this colors is just going to be the color of our text. So let's say I want to make this maybe red, right? This is going to change the text color to red, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that at white. And then our background color, you can either switch that around maybe to black or whatever, but I'm going to switch it um, to this color here because this is a color that I'm using for my entire blog. And then you can also add a border color as well and then extend the border. Um, but I'm not, I'm not really going to add a border to my, um, to my button. But you can do that as well. You can add a little border to this. Um, and then we can also add a little border. Let's see. Add a border of maybe two pixels. And then you can also just remove this background if that was something that you wanted to do. And then you can change the color of this text here. Um, but that's entirely up to you. That doesn't look the great. But I mean, what I would probably do is just and then just uh, make my border here a little smaller. I mean, if you wanted to do that as well, that also looks pretty clean. But I kind of like how it was. So I'm going to go ahead and just go back to how it was here. So I'm going to make sure this is set to white. The background is going to be this color here. And then I'm going to remove the background, uh, the border here. There we go. Now that's perfect. Now you can also adjust the font as well. But I'm going to leave that as is for now. And then you can also set up a margin if you wanted to set that up as well. If you wanted to add some spacing to your button. But we're going to leave that as is. Okay. So now I'm going to go back here. And now that that is all set up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add maybe a top menu. So. I'm going to go ahead. And just add a secondary navigation. Now I'm going to add this right to the middle. I know I'm scrolling down here on accident. There we go. I'm scrolling down here and then maybe I want to add social icons here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just change the color of my um, of my bar up above here. So I'm going to click on this little gear icon where it says top row and then I'm going to go to design. And then we're going to just adjust the top row background. And we're going to make that we can change it to any color here. It, mainly you just probably want to have like a really light gray. Or we can even have a let's see here. Maybe a lighter pink. There we go. That one kind of works as well. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter. Uh, that actually works too. Okay, now that's perfect. Um. I actually kind of want my navigation, I feel like should maybe be on this side. Let's move that my navigation over to this side. Let's see how that looks. Okay. Or you know what? Let's move it over to this side. Let's see. Oh, let's move it over to the right here. And then let's move our social links here. Okay. I think that's a lot better there. I think we're going to leave it at that for now. Um. And then let's go ahead and just adjust our social links here. So go back here. Go all the way back. Uh, let's click on general here. And then go and click on social. Now we can go ahead and add a social link on here. And we can edit any of these. We can expand it. And then just add our uh, label that we, that we want on here. And then um, we can also add one here as well. And here, and this is where you would set the links. So this is where you would set all your social links. I'm just adding. Let me go ahead and add just one more. Um, let's do a YouTube here. And before I even add my links here, I'm just going to adjust the design here. So I'm going to scroll to the top here and go to design. And then our icon size, we can go ahead and make that a little bit bigger if you wanted to as well. And then our colors, this is the color of the icon not the background. So maybe we can set this to this color here. And then we can remove the background color, we can just bring that down and make it transparent. And now that's looking pretty good there as well. And then now, I'm going to go ahead and set my links here. So uh, sorry, go back to your social links, and then you click on set links on here. And then you can set all your links that you want to add on here for that. But I'm not going to add any links. I just wanted to show you where that's located. So I'm going to head all the way back again. 
I'm gonna go to my header. And then I'm gonna publish this. Let's see how this looks. There we go. Now we have everything set up. Now, of course, this could be a different menu. Maybe you can have login, log out, or something. Let me actually set that up. I think that'd be pretty cool. Let me go to dashboard. And then I'm gonna go into um, appearance and then menu. Then I'm gonna set a brand new menu, and this is gonna be our um, account menu. And I'm gonna set this to our secondary menu. And I'm gonna click on create, and I'm just gonna create some social some, uh, links here. So go ahead and add log in. Now there are specific um, plugins you can use to create your login log out. I actually do have a video on that. I'll try to link it right now at the top here. If not, just uh, look for it maybe on my channel. And then I'm gonna put a register here. There we go. And then I'm gonna click save changes. Now let's go ahead and take a look. And it's all set already, awesome. Now, if you were using the pro version of Cadence, you're actually able to set up your login and register. And it's pretty cool how they have it set up. You can click on login and you'll get a login pop up or you click on register and you'll get a register pop up. Um, so it's a really cool integration that they have on the pro version. So I highly suggest getting the pro version of the Cadence. So now here, let me go ahead and just start adjusting our um, drop down here that we have. So we want to go ahead and just change the color of, of our drop down here. Kind of don't really like the black here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just um, click on my primary navigation, and then you know what? Let me go ahead and just adjust the design of my navigation here. So the cool part about this is you can add a full height underline. So if you click on that, we'll have this little um, animation here. Whenever someone hovers over this, they get a line right under it, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, actually, you know what? It might be this one here. There we go. So it's that one right there. And let's do this one as well, same color here. Okay, perfect. There we go, now that's looking great. All right. Now from here, let's go ahead and just work on our drop down. So go ahead and click on drop down options. And then from here, we, can, we, have, an, we have an option to have a, either a fade when someone hovers over this. We can have it fade up as well, or fade down. I'm gonna have it fade up, I think that's great. And then we can also adjust the width of this. So let's say we wanted to make this a little bit shorter, see if it was too long there, we can also adjust that as well. Which to be honest, I think there's more customization on this than Elementor itself when it comes to working on their dropdown. I know that they don't have that much customization when it comes to working on their dropdown. In my opinion, I feel like Cadence kinda does a little better on that part. Um, so I'm gonna leave it about, about um, this sizing right here. And then we can also add some spacing to this if we wanted to, um, but I'm not gonna add that much spacing to it. I'm gonna leave it at one where it was. So now let's go ahead and click on design here. And we have our drop down colors. So these colors here are basically the color of the text. So we want to leave those at white, but you can adjust those however you would like, but I'm going to leave them at white. And then our drop down background, this is the main one that we want to adjust. So I'm going to go ahead and make this one, this color here. But as you can tell, it's still, um, or sorry, let me just make sure that I clear this here. There we go. Or we can just leave that at white. I'm getting these notifications here. Um, so, and then let's make this one white, which I think it should be the underlining of it, I believe. Okay, now this one is the background of it. And then we can maybe, let's go to remove this, actually make that transparent. It's gonna be this one here. The last one is gonna be the actual border. You won't be able to notice it here, but once I save it, you'll notice it. Um, and you know what? I really don't like that background here, that little um, background hover effect. 
So let's go ahead and maybe make that white as well. Let's just go back to how it was on white. And then up here, I'm gonna go ahead and make the text this color here. There we go. So now that's working great. Now let's go ahead and just publish this. And let's take a look. There we go. So now it's all set. And it looks really good in my opinion. Um, okay, that's perfect. Now let's go back here. Now I know that on here it might glitch out a little bit. I know that this is white and we have a home here and it's 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 just glitched out a little bit, but once you actually see it on the main website here, um you're not you're not gonna have those issues. Okay. So now from here we're gonna go ahead and work on our mobile version, which I feel like is probably the most important part. So the tablet and the mobile are pretty much the same thing. So um, just because everyone usually uses mobile, I'm just going to go straight to mobile. Um, but you're basically adjusting the same things on here. So from here, our main things that we want to focus on are our logo and our um, toggle menu here. So if you click on your logo here, you can also go to design and you can adjust your icon sizing and all that stuff. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, and make sure I click on this image here. Let's, or just click on the logo here. Click on that, there we go. There we go, there we go. So you can also adjust the sizing of this as well. And however you would wanna size it. As you can tell, this is all set for, um, for mobile here. You can also set the sizing for tablet as well. I'm gonna leave that one as is, I think that's fine. I think it was fine at 200 to be honest. Uh, let me go 200 here. Let's try to set this to 200 on our own here. At least around there. There we go. That's perfect. Okay. So now let's go ahead and just work on our um, toggle icon here. So click on this uh, gear icon here. Or you can even just click on this as well. On this part here. There we go. And then this will bring you an option for your uh, trigger icon. So you can go ahead and change your trigger icon, but I'm gonna leave it to this one. I think that one's pretty clean. Now, um, we can also adjust the design of this, which I feel like is the most important part. So you can click on design here. And whenever someone opens this, um, as you can tell right now, uh, let me go ahead and see our trigger here. So for our trigger, as you can tell, um, we have black and then we have our other color here. So whenever someone hovers over this, you can see that it goes from that color. Uh, sorry, it goes from black to this color here. Um, but we can go and adjust this. Maybe we want to make it blue at first. You know, we can change it to blue or we can just leave it to black. I'm going to leave it to black. I think that's fine. We can adjust the sizing of this as well. And I'm gonna leave it to how it was actually. Actually, we can make this a little bit bigger. Let's do about 35 is fine. And then you can also have your padding to this as well. You can pretty much add some spacing to this. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave, just leave this as is. I think that's fine. Um, I think that's great there. So now let's go ahead and, and uh, go back here. You can also have this bordered in case you want to add a little border to your to your icon as well. You just have to have a border background, I believe. It should be maybe somewhere around here. Uh, but they might not they might not have that option on there as well. So okay. So from here, we want to go ahead and work on um, this pop up here. So just go ahead and click on the drawer container options. And then we can go ahead and work on this. So you can do full width, side panel. You can have it on the left or the right. But I'm gonna go ahead and have it on the right and the side, and I'm gonna have it as a side panel. And then let's go ahead and adjust the design of this. So as you can tell, our main pop-up background color is set to uh, this color here. 
but we can go ahead and change it maybe to black, blue, or any other color that we may have want. But we're just going to go ahead and change it to this color here. And then we're going to go ahead and, and um, you can also adjust the toggle, the close toggle icon, which is this one here. You can make that maybe red or whatever, maybe black if that's something that you wanted. But we're going to leave that at white because I think that's where people can see it. Now, if you want to adjust the color of this, you would actually have to click on the menu here. And then go to design and then you can adjust the color of this as well. Maybe you want to have that one. It would be the primary one here. So, um, but I'm going to leave it how it is. I think that's fine how it is. We want to leave that maybe leave that all to white actually. So let's make sure that's all white. Perfect. And I know it's kind of glitching out a little bit, so don't worry about that right now. Um, you can also have a background to this, but I mean, I kind of wouldn't really have a background to this. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, make leave that as transparent. You can even add uh, more of the dividers. You can make the dividers a lot bigger. But I'm going to go ahead and set that to 1 where it was. I think that was perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit publish. And then let's go ahead and check this out. I'm going to click on inspect. And I'm just going to bring this down a bit. Now here is our tablet version. And that's looking good. Now we do need to adjust at home. Uh, for some reason there, we do have an issue there. So I might need to adjust that on there. And then let's set this one to mobile. As you can tell, it looks everything's looking good except for the home here. But we can go ahead and fix that right now. Let's go back here and let's see what's going on here. Make sure this is set to white. And let's make, there we go. And we just needed to set this one to white as well. Let's publish that. And now let's refresh this. And there we have it. Now everything is working perfectly. Okay. Um, now, if you did want to add, let me go back here. Go back to my header here. Let's go to general. Now, you are able to maybe add more um, widgets to your header. You can also add a button as well. But, I mean, to be honest, that wouldn't really fit in here. So, I would kind of not really have that in there. I would just have your logo and your trigger icon. Now... The cool part about this is off the bat, you're able to create a transparent header and a sticky header. So I did want to kind of go through that. I will probably make a separate video on this later on, but in this video, I'll just go through it really quick here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my desktop here. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a transparent header. So go ahead and click on transparent header. And then enable your transparent header. Now it's going to make everything transparent. Now what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to go ahead for my top portion. I'll click on this sign. Now we might have to remove our top portion right now. For some reason, I'm not seeing an option um, for you to be able to just disable this on the top on our top bar here. Um, so I was thinking we can go on our top row and maybe have add a color to this, but we already have one on here. So for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and remove, um, I'm actually not even gonna, I'm just going to remove this part here. There we go. And I'm just going to leave our main header here. And then I'm going to go ahead and publish this. And there you guys have it. Now we have a transparent header here.
and it all works perfectly. Now I'm going to go ahead and just make this into a sticky header. So go back to your customizer, go to header, and then go to sticky header. And let's go to and enable this. Now the cool part about this is um, let me go ahead and remove our transparent header here. And I'm going to re-add um, what we had earlier. And let's add our social links here. There we go. And then I'm going to go to sticky header. And then I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Now this one, if we put yes, only main row, basically only our main row, which is this one right here, I believe, is going gonna, is gonna to turn into a sticky header. Now, if you want the, if you want the entire header to it would be a sticky header, you just put the whole header. So even the top bar here is going to move down. But I kind of don't like it like that, and I feel like you wouldn't either. You would probably only want your main, your main menu header to scroll down. So there we go. Now that's perfect. Now we can also have a, um, we can also enable the main row shrinking header. So basically what that's going to do is whenever someone scrolls down here, our header is going to shrink. So go ahead and enable this option here. Now, as you can tell, whenever someone scrolls, it shrinks. And it's actually a pretty cool feature, I believe. If you did want to have a different um, stuck header, you can as well. Let's say whenever someone scrolls, you have a different um, menu here, or just sorry, different logo you can add. Um, but I'm going to leave that one as is. I think that's fine. Well, let me maybe let's do let's do about 80 here instead or at least close to 80 that's fine so now we want to make our um, sticky header on the mobile version as well so let's head over to our mobile version here as you can tell if we scroll down here we don't have a sticky effect so in order to do that you got to enable the sticky header on mobile so go ahead and choose yes only on the main row so that's this one right here that's our main row that we want to um to have a uh, sticky a sticky header on now as you can tell now we have a little sticky header there and then we can also have a different sizing as well so we can have it shrink whenever someone scrolls and there we go now that shrinks now let's say you did want to add your header bar that we had that we had before here I'm noticing that we don't have that here um, so let's go ahead and just add that here at the top Again, so let's go ahead and add our um, mobile navigation trigger. Um, they might not have an option to have a secondary um, menu here. For some reason, I'm not seeing it on here. It's kind of odd. Um, but maybe you can add it. Maybe you can add another button and just put login or something. So we can even add social links on here. Um, so you can just go ahead and add that right in. And then we can just go ahead and adjust this really quick. Click on the gear icon there. Go to your design. Um, main color, we want to go ahead and choose this one here. And we want to remove the background color. There we go. Now, like I said, I wish they had a secondary option for our menu here, but they don't yet. They probably have it on the pro version, um, but maybe you might not need that. Um, there's might be specific features that you may need. Um, if you do need more features, I'd probably try to get the pro version. Um, I'll have a link to that down in the description so you guys can check that out. They do have, they do offer a lot more um, features when it comes to uh, your header. You're able, like I said, you're able to add a login, log out, pop up, and a bunch of other cool stuff to it. I might make a video on that in the future. Um, let me go ahead and click publish here, and then watch this. Now, that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions on this, just feel free to comment down below. Now, I definitely recommend using this header builder. Um, I know that you would have to use it with the Cadence theme, but to be honest, the Cadence theme is probably one of the best themes out there. You're able to really customize it. It has a lot of options, um, and I feel like you guys would really, really like it. So if you guys have any questions on it, just feel free to reach out to me. I might make, I think I actually did make a video going over the theme. Um, I'll have a link to that down in the description as well, or maybe a little pop up to the, to the top. So you guys can check that out. Um, but this is a really good 
header builder. I might go over using the footer builder, but I've used it before. And to be honest, I'm gonna stick to using just our Elementor footer. I feel like I feel like you have more have more uh, options to customize it. Um, but I really like what Cadence has going on. And you can use this pretty much on any WordPress website. You don't have to be using Elementor um, or anything like that. If you guys are wondering how I built this website here, I do have a video on this on my channel. I'll try to link that up above or in the description so you guys can check that out. But that is basically it for this video. And I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And if you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.